Welcome to Star Citizen and the best features of Alpha 3.14. With the version 3.14, there were a lot of innovations, new gameplay mechanics as well as larger features in the game. First and foremost, of course, the implementation of the first version of the landing zone Horizon and the gas planet Crusader. And if you want to know more about the individual mechanics, changes and innovations in the game, please have a look at the detailed guides available for each of them in the channel. With the landing zone Horizon we got a completely new graphics setting, which impresses with a soft and calm color scheme, conveys a peaceful environment as well as puts unmissable luxury in the foreground. This creates a contrast to most other landing zones, which nevertheless fits coherently and comprehensibly into the Stanton system. And Horizon invites us to discover it. New armor in the Flag Store for only 15 bucks, get it now! But not only Orison, so the landing zone is a novelty, rather the cloud tech in version 1 represents a first step for volumetric clouds and an extensive graphical upgrade. The game mechanics made possible by this are not only limited to Orison, but are also applied in the area of the jump gates, which promptly lead into other systems like Pyro or Nyx. And at the same time, with Crusader, the last planet of the Stanton system finds its way into the game. And you cannot only buy one, there are even three different ones! But also other game mechanics have been prepared for a timely release. Among them is the medical gameplay, for which we have already received the first hospitals, which in addition to a first interior, already allows some conclusions about this mechanic, which will appear with the next game version. But especially for this area, there will soon be a bigger special here in the channel. But we don't forget the little thing, like new stores, clothes, souvenirs and a lot of details, which are also new in the game. This also includes the flying panorama shuttles, which replace the familiar trains from the other landing zones. The transfer, which feel much shorter, are a visual highlight, at least at first. In the Crusader Center, a mixture of museum and factory tour, we can perceive a clear progress in the area of graphic implementation and detail work. This is definitely a must visit. Here it doesn't matter whether we are on an industrial platform, the landing zone or simply at the spaceport, the views and incomparable impressions of this cloud city can be perceived everywhere. And with the chairman's club in play, we'll probably soon have a new favorite bar. The new Grey Kid Armor, practical, robust, with an incomparable design, at an absolute top price. Three colors in the pledge store for only 15 bucks each, and bundled with a matching paint job for the Grey Kid Rock, you only pay extra for both. With the Constellation Taurus, the fourth and so far last variant of this legendary ship series, this dedicated cargo version finally finds its way into the game. The design of the Taurus is directly comparable to the Andromeda or Phoenix version, but the Taurus gains a few meters in length due to its extended cargo hold. The Taurus is the only version that does not have a docked Snapfighter in the rear, but has the ability to carry two Orsa Rover or Rock DS due to the increased cargo space. With a cargo capacity of about 174 SCU plus 6 SCU shielded smuggling cargo bay, there is a plenty of room for medium cargo operations. 
Another special feature is the large manable tractor beam in the lower section. And did we already talk about the fantastic view? That unique feeling of just flying through the cloud city? Landing, getting out and enjoying the view? If not, you should definitely try that once, since almost all platforms are walkable and you can land there without any problems, even with bigger ships. But let's come back to the Constellation Taurus. Like all Constellation variants, it basically has four size 5 hardpoints, whereby two in the upper area can also be used with fixed size 5 weapons. Currently, the lower weapon positions are forced to be equipped with a gimbal, whereby only size 4 weapons can be used here. However, this is the case with all Constellation variants in the current game state, and with regard to a timely change, nothing is known so far. But even so, the Constellation is still the most powerful ship in terms of pilot armament. Yes. However, with the 3.14, almost all ships are subject to extensive changes in their values, which affect their mobility, agility, acceleration and general flight behavior. According to CIG, the focus here is on the adjustment of the values to the respective ship role. And in the course of these adjustments and adaptions, the new missile operator mode also finds its way into the game. As a pilot, we no longer have the option of using missiles and ship weapons at the same time, but must actively choose one mode. At the same time, the co-pilot now also has the option of actively using the missile armament of a ship in combat, while the pilot can concentrate on maneuvering and the ship's weapons. This gives us a much more valuable multi-crew gameplay, since the active power distribution of our system can also be controlled by the co-pilot. The entire combat system has also been fundamentally changed by the power management system. Due to the fact that a continuous fire is no longer possible, it becomes even more important to have a crew on board which use turrets and missiles and energy distribution in mind to achieve the highest possible efficiency. Because of the power management system, turrets have an independent power supply, which creates an additional usable damage possibility. With the new combat system, it will no longer be possible to use a light fighter to take out a corvette like the Hammerhead alone, or to use ballistic weapons to take out entire squadrons of opponents. CIG also wants to avoid nose-to-nose -nose combat and more towards more aerial maneuvers and attacks. However, it remains to be seen how this balancing and the adjustments ultimately play out. Another new mechanic and especially useful for surprise attacks is the firing of missiles and torpedoes without prior targeting. This ultimately offers, especially in combat against large capital ships, the possibility of using missiles from close range without having to put yourself into direct danger. The aforementioned power management system allows us to actively influence how we control and use our ship. Here, both an passive playstyle, which relies on an energy focus on shields and drives, and an aggressive one, in which we prioritize the weapons and conceivable. Ballistic weapons, on the other hand, do not require energy from the capacitors. And after almost all ships received new basic values, a heavy fighter now flies much more carrier and less maneuverable than a light fighter. These adjustments are still ongoing, but the ship's role and purpose will ultimately determine the handling adjustments. Another goal of balancing is to move space combat away from nose-to-nose -nose combat towards necessary flight maneuvers and more simulation-focused combat.
With the dynamic events, where we can first play the Xenothreat event as well as the 90s lockdown in the Persistent Universe, the first version of large-scale dynamic content finds its way into the game. Here the focus is on the background mechanics, which will have a direct impact on the game economy as well as almost all areas in the game. And if you want to know more about this, I recommend the video about the dynamic universe here in the channel. With the Xenos threat event, which is a threat of a pirate organization against the UEE, all players of a server are called to fight off this threat. Here we have the opportunity to work together and ultimately repel the Xenos threat. And in contrast to the first Xenothread event, which was divided into different manual triggered phases, which repeated themselves for several days, in this new edition the dynamic system in the background should already do its work. And thus we have again the possibility to supply and protect a UE Javelin in order to finally go into battle against the Xenothread, which attacks with several Idris capital ships. Because this event has been so far one of the gameplay highlights in Star Citizen, and I'm really looking forward to the remake. And don't forget to buy armor in game! I hope you liked the video, and leave me a like and maybe even a subscribe here. Version 3.14 offers us some new game mechanics, extensive changes in previous systems, detailed improvements, and with Orison and Crusader, the completion of the Stanton system. For me, one of the most interesting patches so far. But as always, I'm interested in your opinions on the subject. What do you think about version 3.14? Feel free to tell me in the comments, in the Discord or in the almost daily Twitch livestreams. And as always, the most important at the end, a big thank you to all Patreons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. Without you, this would not be possible in this form. You are a huge motivation. Thank you for your support, guys. You definitely rock. And of course, there will be extensive giveaways again this month. How you can participate and what to expect, you can see in the following announcement trailer. I say goodbye until next time, see you soon and as always, see you in the verse.